Hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Victor, and I'm going to be your anchor for this series. Uh, so this is the Data Analytics Essentials course, and this course have quite a lot of nice content that you would want to be aware of before you start using the tools. Because it's very important to get the principles, get the processes, uh, get the guidelines. Then once you start using the tool, it's going to always be very, very smooth and easy. Okay, so we want to look at module two, uh, that is chapter two of the series. And here we want to look at getting started with data gathering and investigation. In the previous module, we looked at why we need to do data science uh, is to get insight, is to get intelligence, is to get information from data. And the one of the reasons is because we want to be able to make decisions. And why trying to make decisions? Few ways we can do that is to try to do some kind of analysis like the prescriptive, like the descriptive, like the diagnostic, and the predictive. Those are the four types of analysis we can be carrying out. Now, don't forget also we talked about the different processes. About six of them have to ask questions, collect data, clean it, transform it, analyze it, interpret it, communicate, and at the end of the day, make decisions from that data. Now, let's look at trying to gather data. Very, very important because we need to um, know how we're going to do that and so that we get the best result. So in this model, we're going to be able to understand data, data sets, uh, able to understand some tools. And at this way, I'm going to be doing some differentiation between different tools that you can use to do analysis. And we're going to see how Excel can be used to do a run through the analytic process. Then we're going to understand some things, uh, concepts like observations, variables, values, uh, because these things cut across, across different kinds of tools, no matter the tool you use. You're going to keep hearing the word like variable, values, columns, rows. So you want to understand and grab this before you start using the tools. In our life classes, in our physical classes, we're going to be running. And for our mentorship platforms, we're going to be running this hands-on. But before we do that, let's get to understand the terminologies. And um, so we we'll also look at some summaries and evaluate what we've learned so far. Now, in this module, you will move to the next two steps of the data science process, which is obtaining and investigating data. You've been introduced to Kaggle. So Kaggle is an online community. In our previous uh, uh, session, we looked at Kaggle. So Kaggle is an online community where you have quite a lot of data set. If you're looking for data set in health, if you're looking for data set in, um, in, um, in population size, if you're looking for data set in... Um, football, typically anything. Let's say we're looking for data sets in, uh, let's say Canadian, Canadian. Okay, I'm saying something about me, immigration. So immigration to Canada, right? So you could see there are quite a lot of data sets you're going to find here. Okay, look at this particular data set. So this data set uh, has to do with analyzing trends and hidden patterns of immigrants from all over the world to Canada. Right. Um, so the data set consists consists of immigrants record from 150 countries between 1980 to 2013. Okay, so uh, what are the columns? So we have country name, country name, uh, we have continent, we have region, we have so. At the end of the day, if I sign in to Kaggle, I'll be able to download this file, right? So normally it asks me to sign in. So I'll be able to download that file. And with that file, I can now start doing my analysis. So Kaggle is a popular community where data analysis, analysts, scientists, AI enthusiasts collaborate. Uh, you can also get some valuable hands-on experience using Excel one of the world's most used spreadsheet, spreadsheet uh, technologies. Uh, some of the model objectives is that we want to be able to know the common tools being used, uh, get to know some basic Excel functions, and be able to explain how variables and values are used in data analysis. 
typically variable is a is a is a container it's it's what holds values okay so tools for data analysis now data and data sets data is now being collected and shared across many different organizations and in many different formats now the data set we tried looking at earlier on the data set was going to be i think csv so comma separated value right let me see I think I'm going to okay. Yeah, this is it. So Canadian immigration, this part is kind of wrong. Immigration underscore data dot CSV. So comma separated value is a type of data. So you have Excel, you have um, XML, you have quite a quite a lot of uh, different types of uh, different types of uh, uh, data sets. Okay, so data sets often contain multiple related files stored in different formats. Information about a data set, including the description of what it contains and how it is formatted, is called metadata. So metadata is data that explains data. It's just like for a website, if I... Let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this. You see, this is what we call the metadata. See these guys here, the context, what it is about, the inspiration, all of that. So the inspiration behind this data is we want to do some visualization. Then we want to see if we can look out for hidden patterns. Is there a, is there a country where you have more uh, immigration to, to Canada? Uh, is there a pattern? Uh, is there a time of the year when you have more... Uh, immigration happening uh so just a second so this is its metadata so metadata is just what we work what we looked at now and see the data see some of the visualization okay this is just people downloading it So one of the most common formats used to package and exchange data is the comma separated values, CSV formats. Data sets are publicly available, may be made up of multiple CSV files and contain related data. Just like you can have an Excel sheet, uh, it's going to have different, you have an Excel workbook and it's going to have, uh, what's it called, different sheets. So for further investigation, we're going to be dealing in our hands-on sessions, we're going to be dealing with mostly CSV file or XLS file, that is Excel file format. Now, what are the major tools that a data analyst can use to do his data analysis, his visualization? So the three we're going to be considering in this course is going to be Excel, is going to be SQL, a structure query language, is going to be Tableau. Let me talk a little bit about SQL. Now, most of us are familiar with Excel. Uh, Tableau, uh, maybe not too familiar. We're going to be doing some visualization in it. But when you hear about SQL, now, you know you have database management systems. So if you see a portal, if you see a website, if you see an application that is going to store data, it then means that website or the application or that mobile app is a database-driven application, database-driven application. And there are different types of databases. So you have Oracle. If you do a simple check, top five DB, DBMS, so database management system. So you have MySQL, you have PostgreSQL, you have Redis, you have SQLite, you have IBM DB2, Oracle. So these are different types of databases by different companies, by different vendors. Now, if we have data stored in this database, database is typically a table. If I say database, you will see something that looks like a table. In our hands-on sessions, I'm going to be opening a live database for you. I'm going to open a database on a website for you. You see how what it looks like, then open an Excel sheet, which is a type of database. Only there is a file-based type of database. Now, you see that the database just typically contains rows and columns. So it's a table. 
to put it short. Now, the thing is that if we are using all of these databases, how are we going to query top 5DBMS? How are we going to be able to query information? How, will, how, are we, how are we going to be able to retrieve information from these databases? So there's what to call screwed. Call it screwed, call it, uh, call it uh, crude. Sometimes I like to call it screwed. So when you hear the word crude, we're talking about create, read, update, delete in databases. So that means that if you have an application, a database, how are you going to be able to get information from that database? You do what? You read or you search out that information. What if you have your name in that database and you want to change it to something else? What do you call that? You update. What about if you want to delete, just like you have a, maybe you have an account on Alibaba, you have an account on DHgate or on Amazon, on Jumia, on any ish, uh, shopping platform. You know, what's going to happen is that you might want to change your address. You no longer want to ship to a particular address. What do you do? You go to the address bar you have on your account and you do what? You change it, you update and you save. What's actually happening then is that you are updating. What about you don't need the address again? You want to remove it and put something fresh. What are you doing? You are deleting. What about when you search for an item, you, you put on, you, you click uh, the search bar, what happens? It tries to read and load the information from the database. That is read. When the admin is going to be creating different products for people to buy, you add a new product, upload the image and all of that, post it. That is what create. So for every database-driven application or website, the only way you can get information or change or put in information into it is through crude. And one excellent way or one language, not necessarily a language, but just a way, yes, we can call it a language, but we don't always classify it as a language, is what using SQL, structure query language. So it's a programming language for storing, processing information in the relational databases. So you see the databases that we have, the point is that, how do we retrieve information from the database that we have stored? How do we put information into the database we've stored? We can do that using SQL. Now, because as data analysts, we're going to find ourselves trying to not necessarily create the database and all of that, except we are going a little bit further to become data engineers or backend developers that is going to actively interact with that. Most of the time, this database is going to be available for us. And the format in which it will be available will be, let's say, a .sql file. So with that file, or we give giving access to the database, we can query the database. We can get information. For instance, we can get top five customers. We can get top five products. We can get highest sold product. So we can be retrieving such kind of information from the database. So the three things we are going to be looking at in this course is Excel. SQL and Tableau. So Excel, a lot of people use Excel. There are different things we're going to be doing in Excel. We're going to be trying to, we're going to see how to clean, remove blank spaces or incorrect or outdated information. We're going to be able to do some conditional formatting. You might have some a table and you want to say if a particular number is above maybe 100, let it be green, let it be blue, let it be so that once you glance, the goal of an analyst is to make sure that once layman, once senior executive, once anybody that does not have really some technical skill set, glance at your report, glance at your sheet, the person can make an informed decision. Then we're going to be doing sorting and filtering. Then we're going to be drawing some graphs, some charts, because if I have a graph that goes this way, up, I can always tell that, oh, there's a trend, there's a positive trend. If I have a graph that goes down like this, I know there's a negative trend. So as this one is increasing, this is decreasing. But if I have a graph that goes this way up like this, it then means as this is increasing, this is increasing. So we'll talk about different types of relationship later on where we try to say, oh, there's a positive correlation or relationship or there's a negative relationship. 
I've talked about SQL. So SQL is going to help us create, retrieve, and um, aggregate, typically run crude operations. So when we say crude operations, we mean assess, read, manipulate, and analyze data. Then the last one we're going to be using for this course is going to be Tableau. So we're going to use Tableau to do some dashboards. And most of the times so we're going to have our Excel sheet already. Then we can do the cleaning there or we can bring it to Tableau and uh, do some analysis. This is what Tableau looks like. Uh, let me see if I can load uh, what I have on my PC. So you can actually use Tableau to do quite a lot of visualization. So if you need to do very clean crypts visualization and dashboards, then Tableau is the guy. Excel can do quite a lot of visualization, but uh, Tableau would do it uh, a little bit much better and easier. So if another tool that can do this more faster for you is Power BI. And we're going to be considering the Power BI series later on. Uh, because in Excel, if you want to create a dashboard like what you're seeing here, you're going to create pivots. Once you create pivots, you can now... Pivots are like summaries. If you have an entire sheet, you want to create the summary of it. You want to create a summary of another sheet. You want to create a summary of another sheet. Then you now, for each of those sheets, you now create pivot charts. So this is a chart. This is a chart. This is a chart. This is a chart. You now put everything together. That's what makes up your... Um, that's what makes up your dashboards. So your dashboard is a combination of several uh, charts. Look at this chart I did some time ago. Uh, what was happening here? Open from localhost, right? Tableau is configured to new open Tableau public. Uh, open in Tableau public. Oh, let me see. I'll have to sign in. I don't want to sign in right now. Okay. So you see, is this trying to do this open? So you see that all of this dashboard, okay, this is open. All of this dashboard, this is what the Tableau environment looks like. So you could get your data in Excel sheet, right? And you can come on Tableau and you create awesome visualization. So a visualization, a dashboard is an aggregation of several uh, charts, right? Okay, let's try it on. So uh, Tableau is one of the most used data analytics and visualization tool in the market. Visualizations are an important way to present data in a format that can be easily understood, right? Tableau is a data analytics market leader due to the depth and quality of the visualization. Uh, but I, I have a bias for, for Power BI. Uh, so people have different choices. Some people still prefer to use Excel. Some people prefer to use Tableau, some Power BI, some... I, I used to have a student that was very, very good in, in, in uh, what was it called, in uh, using Cherro plates, using different kinds of uh, uh, Python libraries to do most of his chat. Now, see, it's a matter of preference. And one thing, one good advantage of learning more than one tool is that uh, you're going to get some geeks, you're going to get some jobs, you're going to get some tags, and some of them will typically need a particular tool. So if you are good with that tool, it makes your work a, a whole lot easier. Okay, so this is what Tableau looks like. So this is a data, I think about, this should be roughly about 10. Let me see, let me go back to data source. Oh, don't want to open a data source now. So this is roughly about, about I think two, 3,000 data sets. So you have different sheets. So this is sheet one, this is sheet two, sheet three. Are you seeing the corresponding dashboard? Sheet four, sheet five, then sheet six, right? So each of these sheets uh, made up, give each of these charts and all of the charts are brought together. So at the end of the day, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six charts. Uh, helping you to deliver. You know, so Tableau is very, very, very awesome. Um, let me go to this uh, by segment, profit made by segment. So if I go to this visualization now, you're going to see that uh, 
these are all the original tables. I could say, okay, uh, this is a cop. This is customer segment. Customer segment. Where is it? Customer segment. So I can give it a different uh, color shade. Right. You could decide to include the labels for it. Uh, indicate all. Show the marks. Right. So you could do very very nice amazing chart so how did i do this chart it's a very straightforward process i could remove all of this so in tableau you just say let me remove this one also remove so you just say okay i have all my the columns in my table uh what i just need to do is okay what i just need to do is to say okay i want to do for each product category i want to know uh how much quantity was ordered so simple as that i could decide and say okay i want to turn this to be a chart and i could swap it right and i could say okay this same supplies this same quantity i want to raise the guy the other quantity i want to have the colors different, right? Let me remove that. Other quantity. Other quantity. I want to have the colors different. Other quantity. So I want to have the colors different. Why is not working? Undo, undo, undo other quantity. Other quantity. I don't like these colors. I could tap on these and edit the colors and say, okay. Uh, I think it's doing a uh, monochrome. Let me go and say, okay, just a second. I would have, uh, let me change. Edit colors, opacity, border automatic. Uh, apply so you could play with uh, all of these guys and create different charts so you see the charts it's it, it, it's telling you that the, the the guy with the higher number uh, with this gradient is uh, more increased if I go back to the dashboard which is this guy you see that it's affected so I can I can I can play with each of them I could go to their individual sheets and work on them right i could indicate labels i could do a lot of stuff so this is what the tablet environment looks like and this is just a very simple basic uh demo of something that's already done so we're going to be examining quite a number of sheets a number of data sets then you're going to try to see if you can visualize if you can make insight man looking at this dashboard now i can easily say oh uh between 2009 2010 2011 we had, I could convert this to a chart so that I could have a better pictorial view or a, a what's it called, a, a bar chart, just a moment. Okay, am I not able to see it properly because it seems their, their dates are not so different. Let me see something. You see, very, very not too different. So let me swap this. Right, so this might make some slides different for me to be able to understand their their different orders. Right, so you can swap and you can change the different types of chart. Let's head over to our concept. So that's Tableau for you. So you could use to prepare uh quite a lot of uh, charts. So simple functions for data analysis. So observations, variables, and values. Let's look at these three items. Now, when performing any kind of data experiment uh, or analysis, it's critical to define the key characteristics that need to be measured or observed. 
These characteristics to be studied are called variables. Things like age, gender, uh, pay grade, um, uh, employment status, all of these things are variables. They're the guys that are going to hold the values, right? A variable is the context is anything that varies from one instant to the other. Because my age is 1,000, somebody's age is 500, another person's age is 10. So that's why it's called a variable. The recordings of the values, patterns, and occurrences for a set of variables are called what? Observations. And each specific observation is called a data point. Observations usually have a purpose and the variable included will depend on the relevance to the purpose. So before you can start talking about variables, one of the first thing you want to do is understand your question. Understand your question. So what's your question? So your question is, what type of animal is your pet? So it then means that you need to have different variables. So your variables are going to be, uh, sorry, your variable is going to be, uh, let's say name of pet. Then your different observations are going to be uh, maybe, uh, let's say dog, cat, whatever. For example, if you have lost your pet and have asked other people to help you search for it, only a small set of variables, the dog's characteristics are relevant to the observations. So these characteristics might be the type, of animal, the type of dog, the color, the size, and, and the weight. Types of variables. Now, I will bug you a lot if we're doing SPSS. And we'll come to that. Maybe in the series, I'm going to do a series on SPSS. And SPSS is a very excellent tool where you want to do uh, a few based research. But at this point, one thing you should understand is that when you have your data, your data is going to come in different classes. So we have what we call categorical and numeric or textual and numeric. And at times our textual variables, we can put numbers to it for easy analysis. So there's what we call nominal, ordinal, continuous, discrete. Let's take some examples very quick. So nominal is a type of categorical variable. So when you need to categorize people and there is no scale to it, or there is no kind of increase from, from, one, uh, from one point to the other, or there's no rank, you call it nominal. Things like... Uh, what course are you running? That's a nominal uh, variable because we're going to be seeing data science or we'll say um, uh, cyber security or networking or project management. There's no, there's no order. There's no one that is greater than the other. You classify it as ordinal if there's a kind of level. How was work today? Too bad. Very bad. Okay. It's just normal. You should, there's, there's a skill. So that's why you call it ordinal. So there's an order. So these two types of cat, uh, two, two types of variables, we call them categorical variables. And of course, for numerical variables, most of the times they are quantitative. So we have the ones that are continuous. And of course, we have the ones that are discrete. So these are variables that are quantitative and can be measured along a continuum or range of values. These are two types of continuous variables. You have the interval, can have any value within the range of values. An example are temperature and time. So you, you cannot have beyond, it's continuous, it's a number, but you cannot have beyond a particular number. So there's a range. Then we have ratio which are special interval variables where a value of zero can mean that there is none of the variables. An example are income or sales follow. 
very, very explanatory. Then, of course, you have district. Uh, discrete, these types of continuous variables are quantitative but have specific value for a finite set of values. Example, include the number of sensors activated in the network or the number of cars in a lot. So this is a summary here. So you have summaries and examples, variables, container, what holds your data, what can vary from one observation to the other. You have numeric, you have categorical, uh, continuous examples, discrete examples, nominal examples, ordinal examples. In the training group uh, for our remote students and physical student taking mentorship, we are going to be doing some tests. I'm going to be expounding on some of these examples and give you more examples, more case studies of some of these variables so that you can be able to identify each type of variables when you see them. Especially if you start using some tools like uh, like R, like uh, SPSS, you would typically need to select which kind of variable you are dealing with. But if you're if you're using Tableau, Power BI, Excel, it's 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 not going to be much of a concern. One thing you should also understand is that why understanding this is important is that depending on the tool you are using, some kind of charts will not be allowed for some kind of variables. I see that a lot in SPSS. If you try to do some kind of chart for a, a, a numerical variable, it's going to tell you that though that's not possible. So you have to go edit or work on the type of variable because it needs to know the type of variable to know which kind of chart it can plot. Okay, we've learned quite a lot. We've understood some of the tools. Uh, I did a like an overview of what Tableau looks like. You have, by now you should have downloaded the Tableau. Uh, in our live classes, we're going to be working on at least three, four data sets. We have actually 10 data sets, but we're going to be working on like three or four in class. Then you are going to be working, working on the rest. And this is what is going to be part of your portfolio. You're going to put on LinkedIn, uh, Medium, Kaggle, GitHub, and um, Tableau Public. We looked at some common tools and some Excel functions, uh, some kind of visualizations we can do, like charts, graphs, tables. And of course, we differentiated between the different types uh, of variables. Okay, that will be all for my end. See you in the next series. If you have questions, don't forget to ask in the comment section or ask in the training group and answers will be provided for you.